はい<laughs> Sorry for anyone who's sitting there, but, but there's a screen. It's so great to have you here. Thank you. Lily, there's one question that often gets asked of people, and it, I hate it so much because I think it's total BS. And people say, Well, where were you when you found out you got your Oscar nomination? And they're like, I was walking my dog. Bullshit. You knew exactly where, it, when the nominations were coming out, you were sitting by the TV or wherever. But your answer to where you were when the Oscar nominations were announced is beautiful. Where did you want to be knowing that that morning, January 23rd, was the nominations? I wanted to be as close to Molly Kyle as I could get. <laughs> um, I was on the Osage Reservation, I was in Pahuska, and you know, it, it had been icy the day before, so it wasn't an easy drive to get out to Gray Horse. But, um, yeah, I was uh, in Osage County on Osage land. <laughs> so, given that you were there that day, how did you then take advantage of that the rest of the day? What, what were you able to do because you were there? Thanks, I just flew in this morning. <laughs> Thanks, I tried that out on America, out on the carpet. She was very gracious. Um, <laughs> I, um, I'm, just, I'm just here now. <laughs> you know, I, uh, it was a fairly quiet day. Um, I was on uh, FaceTime with my parents, which was great, because that was the other place that I would have wanted to be. Uh, I happened to be in Oklahoma that weekend anyway because I was I formed, you know, we formed wonderful friendships making this film. So I was in Oklahoma City watching Jason Isbell play. Um, he's a fantastic actor, Amazing. go figure. Yeah. And I figured, you know, I'll just stay in Oklahoma. Um, and it was always kind of a thought in the back of my head. I did also decide to be in Osage County um, when the film premiered in LA. Um, you know, that was during the strike, so we couldn't be there. And, um, yeah, I kind of figured it was really just that a whole group of Osage folks got to go take to the red carpet and got to speak first about the film because actors couldn't. So I went out to Gray Horse and I just um, paid my respects to the family then and uh, did the same, basically the same thing when, I, when the nomination came in. But, you know, I felt like uh, a little tumultuous trying to trying to get out there, so I didn't want to put my life in danger taking these icy roads, but <laughs> did uh, roll down to Osage Casino and have dinner and say hi to a few people. <laughs> um, a simple question, but one that I'd love to know the answer to. What does it mean to you to be the first ever Native American performer nominated for a Best Actress Academy Award? Thank you. It means I, um, well, one, get to highlight Native Indigenous designers, John Tacom. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a dual thing. It's long overdue. This is the 96th Academy Awards. Um, this industry film was originally founded. Some of the first filmmakers, some of the first film footage was shot by Native people documenting our way of life, and then it exploded. You know, it was like huge in the 1920s, and here we are in the 2020s. Things come in a little full, full circle, and people care about the stories that we're telling again. Um, but that's a lot of history and a lot of years of um, exclusion or misrepresentation. And I mean, Super Bowl's tomorrow. We haven't come that far if we look at one of the teams that's playing tomorrow. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's the thing that makes it, you know, it's, it's a lot to put on one person, but I don't look at it as mine. It's a circumstantial 
that it's this filmmaker, that it's this point in history, that it's this story, that it's this kind of an epic tale, that it's this character, that it's this community. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, um, the film is so remarkable because of how remarkable Osage people are and how much they had to say about the making of it, how embraced we all were. I'm so grateful that I get to share this historic nomination <laughs> with Scott, um, also a first Native American nominated in the category from Wajaje, from the Osage Nation, and that just makes it feel like that's right. Mm. You know, if I'm telling a story about Native people as an Osage character, it's only right that there also be an Osage or several Osage nominees. So. But yeah, it's, it's shared. That's ultimately what means the most to me. Is, um, I mean, the way that the response in Indian country from the Globes win, it's like, I'm, I'm done, <laughs> you know? It's, um, it's very shared. It's, uh, it's very touching to see the impact that a win for one of us means for all of us. That's great. I was intrigued to learn that Martin Scorsese discovered you in Kelly Reichert's film, Certain Women, which you appeared with Laura Dern and Michelle Williams and Kristen Stewart. When you think back now to your experience making that movie, are you like, thank God I didn't know that Martin Scorsese was possibly gonna be judging me for another movie based on this performance? I actually remember sitting on the little, um, the little uh, AV, the little uh, rig that the dog, anybody who's seen that, the dog, the corgi would chase around. And I'm um, talking to our second AD after feeding the horses. <laughs> um, I mean, I remember reading that script just sheerly thinking, oh my God, this is a perfect film. Mm. This is a perfect character for me. I have to get this. And then I remember sitting on this ranch, on this, um, this four-wheeler, talking to our second AD, Keith, just like saying, I, ca I, don't, I can't describe it. I know my life has changed making this film, but I feel like there's something else. <laughs> so it did, like I had this sense that there were going to be eyes on me that I wasn't ready for, you know? Um, I'd come from very small independent film, um, theater, I'd done several theater tours. It was uh, just getting to work at all that year and getting to tell that kind of story was immense. And I just, I don't know, I had, um, knowing the caliber of talent in that film, knowing how special, because you know, you read, you read a script and you just see the film and you know how it's gonna have an impact. And yeah, I remember kind of bracing for that a little bit, um, but, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I didn't realize that it had been in the works as long as it had, because I guess Marty had taken a pause to make The Irishman um, while developing Killers. And uh, yeah, I guess, I guess his eyes on me went back quite a ways. I love it. Given that the character of Molly so dominates the film, I was shocked to learn that there was a time where Molly had three scenes, I guess, when you first read it. I mean, Marty confirmed that in Q&As that we had, but when I first read it, I kind of thought maybe the sides that I'd gotten, as actors get used to seeing dummy sides, where maybe a lot of um, little curves are thrown into a scene to see how you can navigate them, or there's a lot condensed into it, or maybe it, the scene doesn't exist at all, but you're just trying to see the dynamics. But I remember feeling like these sides maybe were a little bit more developed than dummy sides. But Molly had like almost a half page long monologue where she lists all of her sisters, she lists a couple of murders, um, then Ernest says something charming and she's kind of drawn back in and then you get like a little bit more information that he drops about his family and I was like, oh, these feel like tertiary characters. <laughs> and um, I was kind of, they were hard to perform, so when I submitted the audition, I didn't really feel that great about it, not hearing about it, I assumed that was what it was, but 
Turns out, script was getting this huge overhaul. And Marty did confirm later that there were about three scenes developed between Molly and Ernest and all of that, and the story that had focused on the FBI. But um, yeah, everybody, you know, it's, it's tempting to want to point to one person who said, we need to change this. But what's so refreshing is that it seemed collectively everybody came to the same conclusion that part of the story needed to be with these two characters. Mm. And consequently, that brings the Osage Reign of Terror, <laughs> it brings Osage characters to the center of that in a way that, you know, we already have the FBI story that was FBI propaganda with Jimmy Stewart. We didn't need another one. Well, I'm so glad that, yeah. I'm so glad that the character of Molly grew, and I'm so glad that you played her. And it's a thrill to be with you. Lily Gladstone. Thank you so much. Okay, now before I bring all six of our phenomenal honorees out for a group interview, we have another montage of some of their work to take a look at. Check it out. 